hello friends and uh, this is the beginning of a reading vlog where I read um, Sororan by Viver Solomon which is my most anticipated uh, book of the year. Uh, Solomon is one of my favourite writers of all time I'm super super excited to read um, their newest book. Um, I have today and tomorrow off work because I'm working on the weekend, it's now Thursday the 6th and I have a lot of errands to run in town and I double checked and this one um, sci-fi and fantasy bookstore um, in Oslo apparently has a sort of land as of today so I'm gonna go see if I can find a copy and then start reading it and I'm probably gonna read it quite like intensely I might even finish it today <laughs> knock on wood um sorry it's very <laughs> weird angle um but yeah I might I'm gonna get it today start reading it and then spend today and tomorrow reading it I'm also having Mari over and I'm doing some other stuff but like I was thinking that since I'm so so excited to read it, I would like bring you along on the journey. I have very much like overhyped it in my mind, but I also just feel like it won't let me down. <laughs> Sorry, my MacBook died. <laughs> I was just saying that um, I very much like overhyped it in my mind, but hopefully it will live up to my expectations. So yeah, I'm going to town now to do some errands and get the book. I was talking that I would just briefly mention what else I've been reading. Um, I've been having very bad migraines, so I haven't like read all that much. But I did finish this last night, which is probably with another title for Olga Tugashuk, which is translated from Polish by... Let's see... <laughs> um, Antonia Lloyd Jones. Um, um, Tugashuk is one of my mom's favorite writers, she really wanted me to read this. And I did, and I loved it, and I gave it five stars, so I'll talk about more in my wrap up. I am also currently in the middle of um, Elsa Strickler's autobiography and I'm very much enjoying that still. Um, I'm also currently reading Mosquito and Running for the Springathon. It's very interesting, it's a lot of cool fungi facts and theories and photos, so that's very exciting. <laughs> I also started this last night and read about half of it. It's The Freezer Door by Matilda Bernstein Sycamore. And I got this because I listened to a podcast she did talking about um, gentrification and public sex and like cruising spaces and it was very interesting and it was just in promotion of this book and it worked so I <laughs> I got the book um but yeah it's about like it's not a biography about like um loneliness gentrification sexual encounters intimacy and yeah the public and like public sex spaces and cruising spaces as well as I guess to some extent like navigating these kind of like scenes as like a trans woman and it's very interesting and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. I saw Blur by Nagy Melson, it actually quite like summarizes my experience so far and it says In a happy paradox common to great literature, it's a book about not belonging that made me feel deeply less alone. And yeah, that's also how I feel. So yeah, I'm about to go get the book hopefully and then I hope to stick around for my journey of reading this book and I'm very very excited to read. Hey, it's now a bit later, it's like um, half past two, I've like been to town, done all my errands, all my admin, I got this, super super exciting. Um, yeah, I also changed into more like chill casual, chilling at home clothes. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is um, I'm filming a video with Anna Marie where we talk about the Rift of the Consciousness Prize in like an hour, so I'm doing that. I'll link that up here if it's been post <laughs> posted by now. It depends on how quickly <laughs> I read this, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do anything else today. I didn't like read this. Mari's coming over gonna drink some wine and relax. Um, I saw my housemate was speaking so probably eat and enjoy <laughs> some baked goods but yeah picked up this super super excited. Um, I read like the first 50 pages on the way back and it's just like immediately amazing like just the first like sentence is like stunning like fair writing it's just so good. I'm just gonna read um I should just read the dedication in the beginning. It says, To everyone I ever will be and ever was. Just so great. Um, I guess I haven't like really talked about what this is about, so I'm just gonna read the blurb because like I don't super fun like doing summaries. Like in this vlog, I'm not gonna like 
do any spoilers and talk about the plot too much. I'm just gonna talk about like my emotional response, kind of like what I think it does well in regards to like language and thematically, and kind of just like talk about like yeah my feelings while reading it without like talking about the plot too much. But I do want to like I guess like um let you know the premise. Um, so I'm just gonna read the blurb. Vern, a hunted woman alone in the woods, gives birth to twins and races them away from the influence of the outside world. But something is wrong, not with them, but with her own body. It's changing, it's stronger, it's not normal. To understand her body's metamorphosis, Vern must investigate the secluded religious compound from which she fled and the violent history of the dehumanization, medical experimentation and genocide that produced it. In the course of reclaiming her own darkness, Vern learns that monsters aren't just individuals, but entire histories, systems and nations. So, yeah. So excited about this. Um, I love like Vern's like um point of view, like from the start. Um she's only like fifteen and is um giving birth like in the woods, having es escaped the compounds and she names the twins um Howling and Furl, which I already like love. And it's already so much about like the body, like bodily autonomy, gender, monstrosity, like all the things that make me super hyped. I feel like I'm gonna be hype man. <laughs> number one for this hence why i'm making this vlog so yeah stay tuned throughout the day and perhaps tomorrow it depends on how quick i read it for my updated feelings and thoughts hey um it's like an hour or so later um i'm feeling a bit unwell so i haven't like read tons i've just been <laughs> resting but i just finished like the first bit this is divided into three parts and now on part two um, Kingdom of Fungi, which was Kingdom of Plants, I think. Let's find out. Yeah, Kingdom Plantae. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't have much to say other than like, I am really, really enjoying this so far. Like, it's just so like visceral and bodily, and like it's deeply, deeply unsettling and like intense. So I need to like have a break from it now, I think, but like, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting and I'm excited to see excited to see what's gonna happen next I felt like this part was very much like a thing of itself and a story in itself so I'm excited to see what's gonna happen next <laughs> hi it is now the next day it's Friday morning I didn't read any <laughs> thing else just outside having my morning coffee um I have been reading a bit now and I was thinking that like um I would talk a bit about the I guess like my one criticism of the book that isn't really like criticism and that is kind of like the voice of Wern's twins they're still quite young at the part that I'm in but they speak um, incredibly like profoundly like almost everything they say is very like profound and kind of like telling of their perspective because like they have quite different personalities and everything they say yeah is quite like not like poetic or profound but kind of like in the voice of Wern the narrator and at first I was like, oh, I guess I feel think that's a bit off. But now that I kept reading, I actually do think that like it's very clever and very nice because um both Warren twins live so like such a self-contained, isolated life. Like they live in this like camp and kingdom like of their own. They're completely isolated and like disregarded from like any other kind of like human society. And obviously like Warren's personality is very much like shaped. And being in life is shaped like the trauma she endured at Caneland, at the um, cult <laughs> that she used to um, live in. And um, I feel like it would make sense because, like, she's she doesn't say much, and like, she's like, when she tells the kids something, she hopes it they know it will be of importance. So I think it would be make sense for the kids to also like represent their thoughts that way. And kids are, are just also like very perceptive and lovely and wonderful <laughs> and can see so many things and feel so many things that like older people are more like um I guess distance from. And I think that also like this text very much like self mythologizes, like it very much like is creating its own mythology as it's being written and as the story progresses. So I feel like the voices of both um Howling and Furl and Wern, like together, um, just works really well. And it's kind of like, yeah, an act of like self mythologizing. Um, I think it actually like flows really nicely and is quite poetic without being off putting. 
So, it's a little <laughs> update from me. I'm not gonna really do much today apart from like maybe going for a hike because like I feel a bit bad. I'm just get, I'm gonna get a migraine. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like hopefully finish this and then I'll update you when I read some more. So I just finished the second part and I'm now on the third part, um, Kingdom Animalia. And this is just so good, like, <laughs> this whole vlog is just me being like, this is amazing. But um, I vastly preferred the second part to the first part, like I'm enjoying the book as a whole, but like, the second part was so good and actually really, like elevated the text um, even more somehow. I love how it deals with like accessibility and disability. Um, Vern and one of her children have albinism and also I read Vern as like neurodiverse and um, Vern's brother as neurodiverse and I think that's just like the way it's handled it's really great and I kind of love kind of like the discussion of like cane land so like the compound the kind of culture is a part of as having started as like kind of like a radical black community project that was then like destroyed by like the state and government interference and it's really interesting to think about it like in relation to like I'm reading Das Hata Shakur um, autobiography and just thinking about, I don't know um, just like the state and like white supremacist like destruction of like community and care and um, yeah um, I also love all the new characters like introduced in the in the second part, Go Go is my favourite um, She's um, a queer and a trans, I guess, like um, um, Lakota indigenous woman. Sorry, <laughs> I'm a bit tired. Um, and I just, I don't know, I think she's just so fucking great. Um, I love her. Um, I kind of like how she talks about like gender and sexuality in like, um, in her context and how it's kind of like hard to translate. Um, into English and also how she didn't have to like translate the concept of who she is into English um, and I want to read this one bit because um, she's a medic and um, just the way that this book kind of discusses like care and community um, let's see this is Gogo talking about her aunt um, what's the so-called right food you're gonna do when you don't have access to good medical care that's why I do what I do I want to be there for people who don't have anyone else to take care of them Fuck all that eat a good diet shit. Both people need to live with other people. Just love that. Um, so yeah, this is amazing. Um, I'm getting a migraine, so I'm gonna like take some pain meds and sleep for a couple of hours probably. But then I'll read the last bit of this. I might just do it now before I take the medication and fall asleep or I'm in too much pain to read just because this part ended on a very suspenseful note. So I do want to know what happens next. Hey, um, it is now more than eight hours later. I did have a migraine, which is not very exciting <laughs> vlog content. So I spent all day <laughs> in bed. Um, but I did finish this and I loved it so, so, so much. Like I've been crying for half an hour because like I was overwhelmed with just like, I don't know. The concept of this and what it does is just so amazing like this truly just like called for the abolition of everything and it's actually like a beautiful like I don't know tell like resilience and love and community and um, yeah I just I think it's so beautiful like also the fungi oh my god as I'm currently like reading so much about like fungi the fungi aspect of this becomes very intense it's so so good um i'm not going to talk too much um about more of what happens if you just read this like it's very very intense and quite gruesome and there's a lot of like cruelty in this and a lot of like body horror i guess you'd say but it's just like so so good and um so worth reading um the language is like incredibly lyrical. Like I love every so almost like writing like in all of fair books. But um and this is just so so lyrical and like I love 
lyric writing, like I love poetry, I love poetics, like my channel name is British Poetics, but I feel like a lot like lyrical writing doesn't work for me because like it presents these like images while very descriptive have kind of like become cliches. Like I think that like a lot of things that are lyrical like won't like conjure up new images. So they aren't like that interesting, but I feel like kind of like the lyrical writing and the poetics of this country is like really like powerful new concepts and like, I don't know, like allow me to like imagine things that I feel and believe more clearly, but also want to like imagine and contrary images things that like I don't have the imagination to like conceptualize in that way and it's so beautiful to be able to like witness that and I'm really grateful for Solomon for like sharing um their vision and like sharing this text with the world I think it's like so beautiful and very very important this is very like gushing but love this you should read it um well I think that like you don't have to like rank things I'm actually quite like against that I am also like, I'm an Aquarius, but I have a Virgo moon <laughs> and rising, so I love making lists. So my plan before doing this vlog was to like, um, <laughs> rank Solomon's like books as like a way of ending it. I've given this all five stars and this is number three, but like I do really, really, really love it. And while reading this, I was like, I love this. It's like going to be one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but this would be my favorite if I had to choose just because like the exploration of gender and the feelings surrounding like gender and self in this resonated pretty like in a lot of ways like obviously like um as the violence like as your face is very like rooted in like blackness and like being a racialized like object which is something like I could never um which I don't have an experience of but I just like love this um so so much but the end of this, I was just like, this is one of the best books I've ever read. Like, it's so, so good. So, if I had to rank them, I think I'd still put this second. But if I were to, like, it is one of my all-time favorite books. I think it's amazing. I do need to, like, think about it a bit more and see how it kind of, like, I don't know, like, impacts me long-term. I think this is still my favorite. I just love this book so much, but I also love this book so much. I do also love this book um but yeah this was so great i'm really ha happy i finally was able to read it i did actually get an arc from neck alley which i was super super excited about but i just couldn't read it on my phone like i would get an ipad to be able to like do that in the future so i'm really grateful for um them providing me with that arc but i decided to wait to get a physical copy because i didn't want like my experience to be like challenging by me having to like read on my phone and then get my migraines and headaches or whatever um but yeah i don't really know what to say i just as i said like i just slept all day and read this and then i cried for half an hour and i feel very like because like the ending is so intense but also like cathartic like in a sense and now i just feel very like like i've experienced like a big thing which i feel like reading this it's like it's just so amazing like i am hype man <laughs> number one it's so good you should definitely read it and yeah i can't wait to read whatever Solomon um writes next so yeah if you made it all to the way to the end um thank you so much for watching um let me know if you read this if you're planning to read it um yeah i will talk to you soon bye